Welcome to LearnClickView.com. In this tutorial, we'll go over um, alternate states in ClickView. Alternate states was introduced in version 11 of ClickView. Uh, essentially, alternate states allow you to perform a comparative analysis for um, events such as sales trend, uh, year over year sales trend by customer or salesperson. Um, this feature uh, allows you to create and name states that can operate independently of each other. So you can group a set of objects in one state versus another and those uh, objects that are in the same group will will behave um, independently of how users make selection. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, see that in action uh, as I show you how alternate states work in ClickView. So let's begin with, with our example. I'm going to create two states and as you see I have created two charts to illustrate um, how we can perform comparative analysis using alternate states. So in order to create alternate states first you go into setting document property and create a state and we'll call it state A and state B. All right, that's all you need here. Um, now, we're as you see, I've created uh, two sets of calendars. So uh, my intent is to group the first chart and the calendar objects in in state A. Uh, so once I do that, uh, this three objects, the year, month, and and the chart will um, will behave as a group. So let's go ahead and, and uh, in the general tab assign state A. I'll do the same here for this one. And, and the chart itself um, will be in state A. Okay, so that's there. So any selection I make, uh, as you see, is applicable only to the left chart. The right chart is unaffected at this point. Um, so let's clear that out and uh, do the same steps for for the chart on the right hand side and, and the calendar object on the top. So uh, I'm going to assign state B to this. You here. And state B to this. So now, uh, as, as you can see, I have set of objects that are in state A and set of objects on the right in state B. Um, another quick look at the expression uh, shows us that all we're doing is sum of quantity um, on, on both charts. So good enough. So when I make a, a selection, for in, instance, 1997, uh, this chart showing me that if I do 1998, now I can do do comparison. Um, that's good enough. But what if I want to use some dimensions that can impact both charts? Um, and and uh, by by um, definition, since you know these charts are um, in different state than the default state, um, we'll have to use set analysis to to facilitate uh, common dimensions. So, uh, in this particular example, we're going to use salesperson in company name. Uh, right now, you see, uh, if I select a, a salesperson, um, th that has no impact on either chart or a company name has no impact whatsoever whatsoever on either one. So uh, in order to include this to common dimensions, uh, we're going to use a simple set analysis syntax here. So I'm going to start with curly brackets. And um, uh, first is the identifier, and that's going to be state A for this. 
and the modifier. In this case, I'm going to say salesperson equal. And um, in order to use uh, values from a default state, you can use dollar and uh, colon colon. And and again, the the name the name uh, the value the dimension that you want to pass through here. Um, the same applies for the company name. Equal dollar colon and company name. So, so that's it. So, uh, all I've done is added an identifier to identify that the this this particular chart um, has state A. Uh, as its scope, the identifier, and then um, in the modifier, I have salesperson passing value from the def uh, the user selection, and same applies for the company name. So I'll copy this to apply it to the other chart for now. Good enough. So if I now select a salesperson or multiple salespeople. Um, this chart's getting reflected. Um, the same applies to the companies. If I select certain, you know, again, um, there's no impact on the right-hand one since we have we have not added set analysis syntax to the expression yet. So I'm going to go and uh, modify this, and then change. Um, again, you know, since this chart's in state B. The only change I'm going to make is from state A to B. The rest is same. So I'm going to apply that right here. So, so now, uh, as you see, uh, th these two dimensions, uh, even though they're in default state, they do influence the values of of the the left and right both charts, and um, that that's very important. Um, piece of this uh, since you may have practical situations that require you to use a whole bunch of common dimensions uh, along with um, alternate states uh, or objects in alternate states to, to create uh, a, a suitable comparative analysis. So as you, as you see here now, I have calendars uh, and objects in certain state. And um, then I have this uh, multi-box uh, with, with dimensions in, in the default state. Uh, and and um, now, as you can see, I can select a year and get values for, for um, the left and right. And this way, I can compare how the sales was uh, by the company uh, between uh, year 1997 and 98. And um, uh, not only that, I can I can select any number of salespeople, um, or I can I can change um, sets of different customer names to do the comparative analysis. I hope um, you enjoy this, and if so, please uh, come and visit my blog again, since uh, I regular regularly update, or at least try to do that. Till then, so long. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.